Okay, welcome back everybody to the C3 Fall, our second lecture. Today we're just talking about various uh, digital equipment and just giving us a you know a high level idea about these things so that uh, when we as leaders uh, have to make decisions in our churches, in our ministries, we have some information based on which uh, we can make these decisions. So we've been talking about sound equipment. Uh, let's uh, move forward, just look at a little bit more uh, information here on the, on the sound equipment that we can really use. Um, so, in terms of uh, microphones, now obviously uh, microphones are uh, very important uh, to use, and we just need to keep in mind, just a few things in mind, that there are actually different kinds of uh, microphones. Uh, broadly speaking, we have what is uh, what we refer to as uh, dynamic and condensed. So the dynamic are, you know, what we would say, the typical microphones that we use. They are rugged, durable, uh, they use on stage. And uh, the condenser, it's, uh, they capture more subtle or sometimes high sound, high sound levels or fast transfer. So they are special purpose. You want to think of it, special purpose. So if your sound person says, Master, we need to buy two condensers. What's he saying? He's saying we need to buy two special purpose microphones. Then you ask him, you know, what, what do you want to use it for? And he said, okay, I need it for the drum kit uh, to pick up that kind of a sound. I need it for, you know, maybe if you have people playing cymbals or whatever. So, so when they say condenser mics, they're saying they want some special mics to pick up, you know, certain special sound. Dynamic mics are the regular mics that we use all of And in dynamic mics, there are, of course, what we have to as uh, uh, unidirectional, omnidirectional. So unidirectional means they pick up sound that's coming only from one direction. That's, for example, speaking sound. Uh, omnidirectional is they're going to pick up sound from everywhere. So obviously, for speaking, singing, you want to use unidirectional sound so that they only pick up the voice that's coming to the mic. Uh, you don't want the mic to pick up ambient sound. Uh, omnidirectional is maybe we need to we have a mic hanging where you know it's in front of a choir or in front of a you know two or three people singing. Then you need an omnidirectional mic because you can pick up the sound of you know three people or the choir or whatever. So depending on you know, the use, you would say yeah, we need. Two unidirectional mics, we need to putting it in front of a group of people singing with an omnidirectional mic. So that's something to keep in mind. And also, uh, there are the wired and wireless mics. So, uh, the challenge with wired mics would be uh, of course, these cables running all over the place. Uh, so, if you have five, six mics on your stage uh, you have all those wired mics uh, wires running so generally we, uh, if you want a cleaner stage and you we'll, would we'll, we'll like to go with wireless mics less cables to worry about but remember when you're using wireless systems uh, there could be interference within the transmission and reception of this of wireless devices could be interference and sound being picked up and so on so there are the pros and cons and but generally nowadays wireless mics are very, very good so a lot of people move towards wireless mics for its benefits and uh, there are of course other specialized mics that we talked about these condenser mics you've got other microphones that are specialized for other uh, uh, kinds of instruments, uh, you know, so we, we haven't invested into any of these, but if, you know, if, if, if your worship team or your band grows to such a stage where you want to 
if you want to invest in those specialized mics, that's fine. But generally, you know, we, we work with this three, so it's fine. But just keep in mind, there are specialized microphones for different instruments uh, that we got, uh, that are designed for those instruments. You can use them. So just to get an idea, generally, the sound for the mic goes to the mixer, uh, then goes through an equalizer. Uh, you can also apply some sound effects either through your hardware or sometimes even through software. You can apply some effects to the sound, uh, goes through the equalizer, and then goes to the amplifier that boosts the loudness of the sound, and then goes out to the speakers. Uh, so uh, your mixer, which is combining the sounds that are coming from multiple microphones, um, the equalizer then controls various frequency levels. If you're, you're adjusting the various frequency levels, and the amp is increasing, giving it a little bit more boost, higher levels, and then, and then you know we have we talked about the monitor speakers and main speakers. So the monitor speakers are mainly for the people on stage, for them to hear what's happening. The main speakers are for the audience, for what they hear. So you can control these two things separately. Here you're going to you know, give it a lot of sound so people can hear. The monitor speakers are more for clarity, for people to know. The people are singing to be able to understand, you know, recognize this is how each one is singing, this is how each one is contributing to the overall sound. So that's kind of a general signal flow. Um, so the equipment that you would need to buy Generally, as, as you set up for congregate your service, you know, as you're starting to come, you need to give them good sound so they can hear your preaching, they can hear the, the worship. Um, generally, this mixer, that's an important part that you would need to uh, purchase. So again, there's, there's so many options these days. Uh, generally, you will go by the number of channels that you know, how many input channels can we take uh, and uh, so this one so let's put some pictures here this one has 12 channels uh, and you have some things that are bigger yeah you have uh, and also a lot of the things are built in here on on the device itself so you could uh, do the pre-amplifier, the, the, the amplifier part of it is also built into the, this device here. So it's a mixer with a preamp and so on. So you can get that. It's a lot of uh, uh, options available. And many of these come with the equalizers built. So the equalizers can move up and down different frequencies so that the overall sound um, is holds. Um, there are other effects that people do with the sound, you know, reverb, compression, delay, and so on. You don't have to worry about it. It's, it's what the sound person does uh, to work with the sound. And uh, just figure to keep in mind, keep these things in mind. Okay? So generally, uh, when you're thinking about buying a mixer, what I would suggest is to kind of think ahead. So, for example, when if you have a congregation, let's say, of 100 people, then you say, okay, yeah, you know, I, and maybe you have a worship team of what, three or four people. And you say, well, you know, I have only three or four mics and uh, so many instruments coming in. So basically, I just, have, I just need something. Six channels is enough for me. That's that's good enough for me. That is true, but it's good to prepare for the future. So you know, okay, at some point, the congregation is going to grow. You're going to have more people. The worship team is going to grow. You're going to have more people, more instruments. Maybe you'll add more instruments, and so there will be more inputs coming in. So at that time, so so we're buying a mixer. Buy it for the future. Right now, you need maybe just six inputs. 
but by a 12th channel. It's not a waste because the worship team is going to grow. The number of instruments you're going to use is going to grow. So always prepare for the future. At least that's my thought. And that's kind of the approach we've taken so that you know we're not investing over and over again in buying mixers and so on. And uh, yeah, and, and typically if uh, you know when you buy a mixer, very important is to take proper care of it. So we buy a nice hard case, keep it there inside the hard case so that it's protected. Um, and at least in our situation, we have to pack up uh, every Sunday. And in, in, in some places, in some places, everything is fixed. But in some places, we have to pack up and set up every weekend, which means there's a lot of movement of these devices. And so it's good to always put them in hard cases and protect them. And uh, then, you know, if you take good care of it, it can last you five, seven years uh, um, before you, I guess, before you have a need to replace it. But uh, always think about the future, you know, how your church is going to grow, how your worship team is going to grow, and buy something that you can grow with rather than just buying it for the immediate need. Uh, so. Okay, that's just my thought on the recommendation based on what you've done. And uh, a very important part of, uh, in addition to the mixer, you need all these cables. Uh, just giving the example here of different kinds of connectors that are used. And uh, uh, the so this was this is what is known as a snake cable. I think I may have mentioned this before. I remember in our early days, as uh, we started, you know, uh, having to invest in a bigger sound system. Uh, one day, one of our setup people said, "Master, we need to buy a snake cable." I had no idea what a snake cable was. I was like, "What is this? What's he talking about?" So I had to have him explain to me, like, "What are you saying, snake cable?" Then he said, "Can he explain to me, like, you know, this is basically this box that you can put all these." connectors in and then you have this cable that goes all the way to the mixer it's because this, the mics are all on the stage the mixer is somewhere at the back of the hall you need these things connected so that's what the snake cable does oh okay then i understood yeah and then we got this uh, snake cable and uh, these cables are important you know just i think just uh, maybe two weeks back our sound person came and he said, you know, we're having problems with two of our cables. They become old. So uh, we are having problems with our live stream uh, because the, the cable that goes from the mixer to our, our front of house console to our live stream console, that has been damaged. So and another one that, so, so we have to buy another, a little expensive, but we have to buy it. Because you want to have want to give good sound to the people, and so we had to say, yeah, we've used it for long enough. Uh, it's there's wear and tear. Okay, let's replace those cables, and uh, we had to do it. So you know, it's all part of uh, having the service going well, so that people can hear have good quality sound. But these cables are very important part of this whole thing. If the cables get damaged, uh, the cables get bad. Then obviously sound, no matter what you do, you can have a great mixer, you can have great mics, but if the cables are damaged, sound is going to be bad, it's going to be, yeah, uh, it's going to be disrupted. So these cables are important. Okay, so just keep this in mind. These are all small intimity things. Um, you now over here, I've given a sample setup. right? Uh, and I've put these costs to the Indian rupees because uh, uh, you know, I, 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 that's what we we have, uh, but you can you can convert it to the cost uh, in, in in your currency, or you can get similar quotes uh, from for the equipment from uh, you know local in your currency. So if, if we want to have set up an audio equipment for an auditorium with about hundred thousand people somewhere in this way so let's say thousand people what are the things you will need All right so you, there's a front of house mixer 
And I'm just, these are all suggestions. I'm not saying you have to buy these. I'm just saying this is kind of the things that we use. And so uh, I'm just sharing that information with you. Um, you need a, this is a, a two stage rack mixer. It's about um, so many Indian degrees. Yeah. And then we also need a broadcast mixer, like I said. Oh, there's a front of house mixer. And the broadcast mixer is the one for uh, mixing sound for the live stream audience. Then we have a Mac that does the mix the like for the live stream. Uh, we use a uh, Logic Pro. This I think is something to. Um, Okay, at this moment I am getting what this is used for. That's right, I think that's the software. And that's the software for the mixer? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, so these are the other things that we're using uh, for our sound and I'm going to need a cost for this the monitors one details here here are the mics um, now we are using high-end mics here um, so you don't need to use such high quality mics but uh, we are using we are using them now now remember we didn't start off with this when we started in the beginning, many years ago, we used very simple, very ordinary mics. But now, you know, we will be able to afford good quality mics, and, and we invested in that because you know, the sound quality is good. It's good to serve the top of the right. So this is kind of the general place. Now, I don't know the exact number of each mics that we have, but this is the cost per unit uh, of uh, the mics that we have. Similarly, these Indian monitors, uh, there is a cost per unit. Uh, I, again, this, I don't know, probably have five or six, so I don't know how many people that these Indian monitors being used, but uh, we have different units of this. And um, uh, different amplifiers. We have different amplifiers for unit, and so on. Okay. So this is general, give you a general sense you know, of, it is expensive, but if we, you know, so invest in it, it's a good thing to do uh, overall, so that you can serve people. So this is a representative thing, list. you can look at it, modify it for your use uh, in your church. And uh, again, I'm just saying that we never started with this. It's after like almost 18 years <laughs> that uh, you know that we've invested in these things. We started with very basic things, and then eventually came to this. Okay. All right. Uh, changing a little bit to podcasting. Um, podcasting is again another useful way of serving people. Now, we have not started uh, podcasts in the sense of what we typically hear, you know, of people having a conversation over some a topic and so on. We haven't done that. What we are doing is, of course, we take the audio of our sermons or of our daily devotions and we release them through podcast platforms. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're not actually recording separate uh, programs for podcasting, which if, if people have the time, that's a good thing to do. Uh, but we are not doing that. Instead, we're just uh, using some of our existing content and, and releasing them as podcasts. But generally, if, if in case you wanted to do a podcast, what would you need? Uh, you would need some good microphones, like I said, and I've just given you references to, you know, where you could look up these, these things. 
I would need good headphones. So generally, you'll have two or three people sitting and having a conversation on a topic, and that all of that is being recorded. So you have, say, if you have three people sitting and having a conversation, they'll have good microphones to pick up their, what they're saying, headphones, so they can hear each other. Uh, then you need a recording software. Uh, again, you can use open source, you can use some licensed software for recording this. You do a, uh, an audio interface and a mixer. And if you're also recording video, you need a camera. We'll talk more about this shortly, but we need a camera if you're recording the video as well. So with this setup, you know, you could have a, a, a good, uh, good uh, system for recording your podcast. Generally, it's two or three people having a conversation on a particular topic, or maybe even sharing the word for God and so on. Uh, this has become an interesting way of uh, ministry. There are some podcasts that have, you know, hundreds of thousands, sometimes, I guess, yeah, they even go into millions of um, uh, listeners, subscribers, uh, Christian, talking about Christian podcasts, which is very interesting, which means that people are interested in this form of digital content. Uh, they like to hear conversations, you know, which are, of course, live and spontaneous, uh, and at the same time, it is communicating useful information on a particular subject, and uh, two or three people are expressing their, sharing their understanding on the subject. So uh, this has become a very, very, uh, I would say, uh, widely used, or widely accepted uh, digital format uh, in, in communication these days. And so it's something if, if, if you have the time and the interest to explore. I have uh, participated in other people's podcasts, but we don't have our own podcast. Uh, because it just takes a, time, a lot of time and effort to do that. We haven't stepped into it. But if that's something you feel you'd like to do, then here are, here's what you need to get started. Yeah. All right, now we're going to change our subject a little bit to talk about video production. I'll just maybe introduce this and then we can continue this next week. So video video production, of course, is, uh, is something that's, that's a very useful thing of ministering and serving people. I remember we started our video programs back in 2001 or 2002. Uh, in those days, uh, we just had a single camera and we should go. We actually borrowed or rented, not rented, but borrowed somebody's church building. And uh, they would have one camera and I would stand behind the pulpit and there'd be one camera pointing at me. There'd be two little lights shining and uh, they, we would record short, short messages. And then we would, uh, again, it was the person from that particular church who did the editing of the video, and then we would send it to uh, the local cable TV, and they would put it on their cable TV channel. So that's kind of how we started back in 2000, 2002, I think it was. Uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of effort to do those things in those days. And we were actually depending on another church to, you know, we were using their venue and their equipment and their person. And of course, we paid for it. Uh, and that's how we started. But uh, it gave us a little understanding of you know what goes into doing a little video production, very simple video production. And it gave us um, uh, the opportunity to serve people through TV programs, produce, produce a video, put it on cable TV. Uh, you can reach people in the city. So it is very simple. Um, then, uh, so we did that for a, a few years. And then in 2012, got TV. So uh, then, you know, satellite TV uh, became 
kind of a big thing in those years. Uh, we had uh, different satellite television stations open up and got TV, uh, which was from UK. They opened up for TV Asia, which means they were targeting uh, uh, the a a Asia region, Africa and Asia. And so God TV called us actually in 2012 and they said, can you produce programs for uh, to be aired on God TV? Uh, and it was like, it was a big thing for us because, oh, God TV was something very big. And, and, and they gave us the, you know, they gave us their document that said it has to follow all these criteria. We, it was like, it was like too much. How are we going to produce video programs that will meet their standard? A um, long list of things. Uh, they wanted that only only if it meets their quality will they air it. Uh, put it on the on TV, and uh, you know. But uh, but they said they reached out to us and they said they want you to come on the TV. Now of course they're not giving it for free. Uh, 13 minutes or 28 minute program was costing us so much uh, and all of that. You know. But then we took it up. We took up the challenge. And that's okay. See, God is giving us an opportunity. Uh, and we have done little, like I said, we were doing small little things. Uh, now to go up to this level of God TV was a big step for us. Uh, but we took it up. And uh, I remember those years. Uh, as we try to kind of you know learn how to do is uh, produce video programs for God TV. Uh, it was good because it, it challenged us. Uh, it it made us it forced us to lift our video production to a higher level. And uh, and uh, so in those days, we rented everything. We didn't have any of our own cameras. Nothing. We didn't have anything at all. So we rented everything from you know, companies that vendors who had all the equipment, and uh, we tried different things. We uh, so in a video production, you need a set, you need some nice background, all of that. And so initially, you know, we had some people who would come up with the idea of a set for this particular sermon sermon series. The set has to look like this, and the lighting has to come like this, and the cameras have to be in these positions, all those things. Right? There are people who can who understand all that, uh, who will help you do it. So we had to plan. We had to plan so it's going to happen. Uh, this is going to be the cost because we're going to use so many cameras, uh, all those things, you know. But we got started. Uh, everything was rented. We got started, and we were on God TV for seven years, from 2012 to 2019. Uh, so we went through all of this, and I share this with you. I'm just giving you an idea of our own journey. And then in 2019, we realized that uh, there was a big move away from television through online consumption. That means people are not sitting, I mean, maybe they're still doing it, they're sitting in front of TV and watching, but people are watching on demand. That means it's no longer, you know, when you're on God TV, our programs were coming on Monday evenings, 9 p.m. to 9.30 soon. That means people have to be sitting in front of their television Monday evenings, 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Only then they can see our program. But by 2019, people were moving away from that to on-demand consumption, which was happening through online channels, streaming channels. And so we, we, we went off God TV and we said, okay, we are now going to to video production for the streaming platforms, for a streaming audience. So that's when we started moving towards the live stream. Uh, so again, we started very small. In those days, we had only one camera uh, pointing to the live 
church, the church service. And that service would be streamed live on YouTube. Very simple setup. One camera, go to YouTube, stream live. And, you know, maybe we have 50 people watching. Uh, that's all. So, uh, or not even 50 people, maybe 20, 25 people, and then some people may watch afterwards. But we made that decision to move away from television to or online streaming because we saw that that's the way the world people were moving. And our video production was very simple. One camera, uh, and I'll talk to you about the setup. Stream, go to YouTube, live. And then, of course, uh, that was in 2019. End of 2019, then early 2020, uh, COVID happens, pandemic happens. Then we had to, everything was online. So people moved, you know, people moved online for a lot of content, they're consuming their thing. And so, you know, here we are in 2024. and. But we know that globally, people are consuming video content primarily through online platforms. People go on demand, they can go to YouTube, uh, they search for what they want, and they see what they want, or they consume what they want. Television is there, but sometimes even many of our televisions are connected to streaming platforms so that you can stream and you choose what you want to watch. You know, we've got lots of um, uh, streaming channels. You can switch and you choose what you want to watch and listen to and so on. So the whole, the way people are consuming video content has changed a lot. So as a church, as a ministry, we need to think about ways in which we can create video content, whether it's the live streaming of our Sunday service, whether it's producing even a short video announcement about your own ministry, about an upcoming event, or whether it's producing short films. Say you want to produce a film that's five minutes or something, where through that film, you can actually impact people. So we've got lots of options these days. So what you can do with video content, you can live stream your service, you can create documentaries, you can create short films, lots of things you can do through video content. Release it on platforms, online platforms, and uh, reach people. Right? So with that in mind, we are going to just get a little understanding of what's involved. So generally, and not saying for everything, but generally, the video production goes has these three stages. Okay. There's a pre-production, so you need to plan. Okay, what am I? What are we going to do? Okay, what's the strategy? Through us, the script. Who are going to be the actors, and who will do the video, audio, video recording? Okay, so you kind of plan this. Sometimes it's a very simple thing. For example. Uh, if you're creating a short video or a one minute video announcing an Easter program, and so you let's say Easter is coming up, uh, you want to create a short video inviting people to your Easter program, you plan, okay, this is what in, in that 30 seconds or 60 seconds, uh, in that 60 second video, this is what we're going to, it's what's going to look like. Uh, it's going to have the script. Uh, these are the people who are going to do it, and this is what we're kind of doing. So there's a planning, and there's a, that's we call that the pre-production stage. Then there's a production, which is the actual shooting of that. So the shooting of the video, sometimes it may have a single scene, sometimes there are multiple scenes. Uh, and then for each scene, you may have you may use the same set or you may use different sets. That's that's that kind. Of so all of that is planned, and then the production happens. You shoot the video scene by scene. And the post-production is basically producing the video where you're merging, you know, you're merging the video recording, the audio, and then you're editing it, you're making it look the way you want it to look, you may add music, you may add special effects, and all of that is done by the, the person doing the 
uh, video editing information. So basically, you're going through these three stages. Um, and then, uh, of course, you you need, uh, in addition to the video cameras, you will need, uh, 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 you know, we need the right devices. So you could, some of this, maybe you could do it on users using, you can record a video using your smartphone, or you can you know, use uh, specialized cameras, like our GoPros or DSLRs, use those cameras uh, or um, and also the formats in which these uh, videos are recorded there they have different formats these days uh, for high resolution media recording uh, and anyway, so you really uh, these things you can leave it to the uh, doing the video recording let them figure it out figure it out but mainly you know you need to help think through the pre-production production so here's what I do now here's what we do here at C. For a video shoot, uh, I tell our media team, you plan and you send the budget. What is the cost? So our media team will plan this. Right? So even for example, uh, a simple thing like our daily devotion. Right? So on one particular day, so how does our, how do we record our daily devotion videos? So we will book uh, a, a studio, or we'll book a venue where we're going to do the recording, and then they will plan. And of course, our, our daily devotional means we have to shoot seven episodes for one week, five minutes, seven five-minute episodes, or actually four-minute episodes, because. Uh, 30 seconds before and after will be the intro and the outro. So they will plan. We need to record. We're going to record. If we're going to record four weeks of uh, content, we will need totally 28 episodes. Seven, 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 seven. Four weeks episodes. So they plan it out. Uh, this is the background. This is the person who's going to be doing the devotional. Uh, we need these slides. We need all these things. And, and you know, therefore, if then they'll work out the budget. They'll send the budget. And I'll just approve it. It's OK, yeah, go ahead. This is the venue. This is the cost. And by now, because we've been doing this so over and over again, the daily devotional, it's kind of more or less fixed, right? because we are doing more or less the same thing. I mean, small, small variations, but Generally, it's fixed. Then the production happens. On that particular day, uh, the pasta who's going to be recording those three or four weeks of uh, devotions will go to the studio and they'll have everything set up. Uh, the background, everything is set. And then the person comes and he records each devotion. He records. So they record the audio of the video. So pastor's work is over, the pastor goes, but then post-production has to happen. That is where they will, you know, the person doing the video editing will merge the audio, the video, put the scripture text, um, things of that nature. Sometimes there may be some special backgrounds they have to put, all of that, and they'll start, they'll release every devotion week by week, they release it. So that's the post production. So this is a simple thing that goes into producing daily devotionals. These are just five minute videos, but there is a pre-production, there's a planning stage, the budgeting, there's the actual production, and there's a post-production work, which has to happen. So even though it's a small little thing, there is a lot of work that actually happens in producing this. And the videos have to be ready. It is sent out that somebody transcribes it, and then it is released in time. And then it goes out on various platforms. Okay. So that's how it happens. It's a small thing. Now, you know, you think about bigger productions. If you want to create a short film or you want to do live streaming, we'll talk about live streaming as well, how that happens. Okay. So we'll pause here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the video equipment. 
and what is the equipment you need and what are the different ways uh, you can you know do the shoots uh, we'll talk about that and again i'm giving this uh, more as a high level uh, so you understand uh, this is what actually goes into video production and you will obviously have a team of people doing this for you but you need to talk to them you need to engage with them you need to tell them this is what i need uh, and so on and i'll share some of the practical things that we are doing uh, for our live streaming uh, i shared with you with you what we're doing for our daily devotional and i will share with you what we're doing for our short films so we are getting ready to produce short films and i'll share with you, you know, how we are going about that so we'll talk about our live streaming what goes into live streaming we'll talk about what goes into these short films and so Basically, we are producing video content that will then be a blessing to people. Okay. Uh, let me pause here. Any questions or any, any, any thoughts or doubts that you have? Any questions? Okay. There are no questions. We will close in prayer. Next week, we'll continue. We will uh, go through the video equipment I'll, and I'll share with you about the live streaming and uh, short films just for you to get an idea of how these are done uh, in video production. Yeah. Could somebody please close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of learning. We thank you for all the information that we are learning, O oh God, and we pray, O oh God, that we would be able to use this in our ministry and help us to make right choices and help us to um, invest in the right things to expand your kingdom. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the learning that all of us are receiving. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you all tomorrow. Bye.